There's nothing like being fidel. There's nothing like commitment. Everybody just wants to play around. And the importance of it is lost. I, I can have a good friendship with Oscar, but he's not my husband. He cannot make decisions for me. Mm. And I cannot make decisions for him or take decisions on his behalf. But if you have a man, there's some things I would rather just leave to the man to do. So it can be a huge task on a single mom to take mental decisions. Sometimes it's not about money. Sometimes you just want the comfort of another person. Mm. And those are the things that marriage affords you. But if you're single, the only thing you need to do is restructure your mind and know that this is something I have to do and find other means of, you know. And has anybody been knocking on that door recently? <laughs> Excuse you. Oh, yes, let's go there. Yes. While we're on the topic. No. It, Come on, I'm a Lord woman, Lord, and I think a very good-looking one at that. Very good-looking. Uh, of course, everybody will be knocking, but I would only open to one eventually. What's, what, are the, what are the qualities now? Because you're very set mm. in your ways. You're established yeah. woman. You have your money. You're already in a, what makes in a you routine. Think I have money. Don't you have your do money. That. <laughs> <laughs> well, for but me... But what are the two qualities you'll be looking out for One in that thing, life? I have been married, so that means I've learned to... How long were you married for? Nine years. Yes, I've, and I know that I know what I do not want, mm. and I know what I want. For me, a man that I'm looking for, or a man that should look for a woman like me, is a man that knows himself. Mm. I don't want a man that is grappling with his own discovery. A man that hasn't discovered himself cannot understand my definition, because I'm already on a journey. So a man that I have to define, mm. that means he has nothing to offer. A man that has defined himself knows where his life focus is, knows what his work focus is, knows what his social focus is, and um, psychological focus. So I'm not the one that would do all those things for him. A man that is together is not about having money. A man that knows himself knows where he should be. Mm. A man that is 45 now can't tell me he has no house. Mm. It's totally on, the, on, I cannot understand it. But a guy that is 27, I can understand that you live in a self-contained. But I won't take that from a man that is 45. So my criteria for men is... What if you have a man who is 25 but has the mindset of a 45-year-old and has I'm his house? I'm going to be 40 in <laughs> April. I would only do... <laughs> There's so far you can go, really. I don't think I want to date anybody that is not 30 and above. But is it about the age? I'm, but me, you are open to... Yeah, you are for me, to I'm open to remarriage. But for me, I wouldn't do... A 27, a 20-something-year-old person, for me, you're still discovering you. Mm. When you cross the 30 mark, at least you've achieved a lot of things, a little bit for yourself. You're already on your way. Your direction is already mapped. Mm. So it's not really about where you are at now. You're on a journey. But if a guy that is 29 probably still has the mentality of a boy and is still becoming a man, I'm not saying there cannot be a matured guy that is 25, but, but he can't be matured enough no. for me. And, um, I mean marriage of nine years, you're now in this space you've never been before. What are the lamest pickup lines you've heard? Uh, or you've gotten in recent, <laughs> in recent times from uh, Lola The you know, madam herself. Yeah, you know a lot of people like this. <laughs> a lot of people just like the idea of, I want to just step up to a woman like me. Oh, the Lola. And you're like, hey, babe, what's up now? <laughs> I'm like, what's up? <laughs> Hi. And it's like, I just hear you, Sha. <laughs> Fine, Sha. Are you joking? And I'm like, even if you want to be flippant, you can do that to maybe somebody that's selling bread or pepper or orange. Mm. But to an educated woman, I say, what's up, Muko? I just want to hear you, Sha. One, I've already put you in a time zone. I know you don't have much to say. Mm. I would rather you give me a warm handshake. Hello, good afternoon. My name is... Can I meet you? Mm. I'm like, okay. And you move on from there. Yeah. What's the sweetest thing anyone, any man has done for you recently that you're like, mm. you guys be Mr. <laughs> Mr. Right? I, I thought this was going to be so serious. No, and I, I want to listen you up a bit. Oh, I, I'm a sucker for poetry, believe me. Poetry. Any man that knows how to write um, just knows how to turn me over. Maybe I'm a Victorian mm. child. I was born in that age. <laughs> so poetry <laughs> does get me. Um, a friend of mine, very close, just wrote me some deep poetry that it took me two days and plenty of crying to really decipher. I'll, I'll talk about this, this poetry <laughs> right after the break. We have Lolo One in the studio. A lot of people have the assumption that uh, she's Yoruba. She, she's Zibo. But we'll find out where she's <laughs> really from and some other things you didn't know about her right here on Robin Mind. Stick around.
Oh, welcome back. It's Robbie Minds, and uh, I have uh, Lolo one with with uh, me in the studio, catching up on a lot of uh, old time. And um, Lolo one attributed to the Igbo. Most people think you're yeah, Igbo. Mm -hmm. You yeah. speak. Igbo. Um, I just say I'm in the middle. I'm, uh, I, I can understand it. I can, you know, sign Relate. language, sign read, <laughs> and everything. But I wouldn't say I speak Igbo. Well, oh, you're actually from Ijebu Igbo. Yes, I'm from Ijebu Igbo, Inogu State. Hmm. I'm a Igbo. thorough Ijebu girl, but... But not stingy. No, Ijebus are not stingy. Yeah. Nah. Do you tell people that outside? Or is that no, just no, no. I, I'm just of the opinion that if somebody is stingy, it's a human error. It's mm. not where you come from. It's not a I've, general... It's not a, you can generalize, maybe because you met two Ijebu people that are stingy. Hmm. I know some Ijebu people that are quite given, though my father wasn't one. Okay, well, guy. let's let's move on to <laughs> other nice topics. Let's move to stinginess. <laughs> Adak, is it Adak, Adaku? Jennifer will say Adaku, but it's Adaku. Adaku. Uh, How did you learn that role? Well, it was just, you know, when you you're just go about doing what you're doing, sometimes greatness would find you. A lot of people don't know that you don't sit in one place and expect some great things to fall on mm. you. It's in the things that you're doing, those little things that don't matter. Some years ago, AY approached me. I wanted me to do like a cameo appearance in um, AY crib. Yes. And I played on Ome. I just had this haircut. I like to do crazy stuff. I had this mohawk, then I colored it red. He came into the studio like, Lolo, you're going to play the role. And unfortunately for me, Jennifer saw, Funke Akinele saw, the, saw it. Mm. Like, this girl is crazy. Okay. She came for my <laughs> first comedy, ex, um, uh, comedy show, the very first edition mm. that I had. I said, oh my God, this girl can do stuff. And then I, I did, I did stand-up comedy at yours event two years, three years ago. Mm. And she was in the audience. I was like, oh my God. And that was how it kicked off. And when she started writing, she said, her mind kept going to me. Use her. Use her. You were the AMVCAs? Yes, I think I you went up on stage. Yes, we went up. Uh, Jennifer's diary won. Congratulations <laughs> Thank you. To, to you and, and, of course, the team. Yeah. It's been quite um, an eventful career. You have, okay, we've talked about the acting, the radio presenting, the MC aspect of mm. you. Um, I personally, I, I have a personal knack for compares because mm -hmm. it's what I do. And I noticed that there are very few female MCs um, in the country, and I'm talking not comedians, but yeah. MCs. Would you share this opinion with me as well, or do you think there are actually a lot of them, but they're just not out there yet? Um, let's just say visible. You say the visible ones are not that much, mm. but I'm sure there are a lot of young females that are doing just at the beginning of their careers, you know, finding their own niche, mm. and maybe they're not out there yet. But of course, there's always a lot of something that we're not seeing. But I know visibly, you wouldn't say there are many female uh, MCs that are prominent or very, you know, of note. Which, which one? Right. I mean, in terms of working, most of the jobs yeah. you get, are there jobs you pair up with other um, um, female MCs or just you? Or I, you? I think I have a better synergy working with a male co-host. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> but I've done events with women that okay. um, I, I would just have to feel my my my. Compare, my, my the person I'm working with, if the person is strictly MC or master, I just do comedy. Mm. I just Which one pays more? By. MC, comedy? Is I think corporate MC events pays or? me more. Corporate event pays me more. I don't even do stand-up comedy to that point. Mm. I'll just say that I just play with my stand-up comedy. I'm more an MC than I am a comedian. Lola, so proud of you. Well done with everything you're doing, your personal and professional life. We wish you all the best. Thank and this you. is your first time on Robin Minds. Come yes, Stinker. I'm Great happy to, have you. to be Robin. And you... you <laughs> We'll be rubbing you later. All Thank right. you very much, uh, Lolo. One. And that does it on this week's edition of Rubbing Minds. It's been quite an interesting episode. Join us same time next week right here, 3 p.m. on Channels TV. Don't forget the hashtag Rubbing Minds and at TV. I am Oscar Oyinsan. Follow me on Oscar in the City at the same time next week. Bye for now. Come on, come on, come on. Hey.